Hi, this is Lisa Johnson and welcome to Make It Monday. Today I'm going to be sharing with you dry brushing techniques to use on paper crafting, on your cards or your scrapbooks, or whatever you'd like to do. I used paint today with my project, but you can use ink as well. So today we're going to go ahead and start off with this little congrats, happy birthday card. You can see I did this background on it using the painting technique. It's down on the edges there. I really like dry brushing because I think you can have a lot of artistic control with it. So first thing I'm going to do is take a piece of Summer Sunrise cardstock. And I have a piece of um, acetate left over from stamp sets from Paper Tray Ink. And I've put a little piece, a uh, little splotch of titanium white. I like to use the bright white paint. And I have a flat sable brish, bristle brush that I prefer. So first thing I do is load it up, and I'm not going to load the paint up all the way to the shank. I try to keep it right there at the tip of the bristles as much as possible. And I'm going to start off with not so much. I want to keep the, access, the excess to a minimum. Now I'm going to use an up and down technique a lot and pull it straight towards me. The pressure is always on the toward you motion. There we go. See how I load my brush kind of in an up and down? I just want to support that angle that I'm going to be using. Now as I do this, I always just check the balance. How I want it to look. Do I want long striations. Do I want short? On this one I'm going for more of a frosted feel so I'm going to do a lot of dry brushing for this particular project. Now if you hear the actual bristles kind of brushing then you're doing it right. You get a little bit of that sound. It's great. It's perfect. Now I like to create kind of a cross-hatched look when I'm doing dry brushing. So I try to cross the actual opposite striations. I think that gives it a more even feel with whatever you're focusing in on with your project. Like I said, quick strokes to it to start off with. Now I'm doing the long strokes to kind of create those overlapping striations that we talked about before. One of the things that you can do to create even things is to actually side load your brush. So after you get everything all completely loaded up and stippled on the end, just grab a bit of paint on one side of the brush and then pull it so that you get a firm and strong corner coverage on that. I really like how this technique can help soften a project and really personalize it. The thing is there's really no right or wrong with a lot of what I'm doing. It's really a sense of your eye, what's pleasing to you, what really kind of the effect you're going for. We're side loading here. Now I'm just trying to blend everything in just a little bit so that I can get some color through and some striations through without actually overdoing it. So I noticed that the balance was off so I went ahead and added some more at the top. Normally I have 
it'll be a little bit cleaner when I'm doing this, but I wanted to try to keep everything in focus for you guys. So this quick action that I'm doing right now is to just kind of soften the striations just a little bit because I'm not going for a real hard look on this particular project. Stipple and swipe. That gives me a little bit of the harder striations. Almost done here. There we go. Now if you don't have one of these fancy schmancy um, stable flat brushes, I love these by the way, you can usually, you can take a foam brush. Results aren't quite as good but you can use your scissors and snip up the ends of a really inexpensive foam brush like like that and here's what the brush looks like afterwards it's like what cost me like seven cents so I just throw them away typically and this is what it will look like not quite as refined but it's something if you don't have one that you can still participate in Make a Monday a little stamping on this one now for the center and I'm stamping right over the paint having even really let it dry with my Argyle image from a little Argyle kind of hard to line these up with a video camera over your head. <laughs> now any mistakes that I'm going to make in stamping, maybe splotchiness or whatnot, I'm actually going to love on this because it's going to coordinate with that kind of sparse, rustic-y feel that I get with dry brushing. And there we go. I went ahead and layered this now on a uh, mat of Simply Chartreuse Hawaiian Shores on a craft cardstock base. I figured you all knew how to do a little bit of that layering, so I wanted to shorten the video to facilitate you seeing actually what we're doing. Pre-did my ribbon. Magic of TV, so to speak. Actually, it's a really good idea if you guys ever wanted to pr sit there and pre-tie ribbons. You could stick them on your cardstock and have some saved up for later. I'm all for doing that stuff like that. Next, I've die cut um, a label from AdSense and used the new Congrats to You stamp set and the sentiments from AdSense. A little glitter on the birthday sentiment. Sweetest Kibby has amazingly cute ice cream cone images that I've already kind of layered, stamped in Versamark and layered and added a little glitter to the top with the asterisks from AdSense. Pretty easy card building. And it's quick and fun and ready to go. So as you can see, dry brushing can really add quite a bit to your project. And um, I wanted to show you a few more projects I've done in the past. This first um, next card that you'll see is using Peaceful Garden. And I've left the areas really unrefined. I didn't want it smoothed out. I wanted it very um, sharp looking to kind of go with the bamboo. And this is a project that I created uh, in the past. And I stamped it in true black and actually used the brush dry with nothing on it to smooth and kind of soften the images out. Thank you for joining me today for Make It Monday. We look forward to you participating and have a great day. Mm -hmm.